Hello and welcome to another episode of Inspired Women Gathering. This is a show that talks about all relationships, spirituality, business, and everything in between. Women are so inspiring, living through their stories, finding resilience, resourcefulness, tenacity, and the powerful movement that we make in the world. I love connecting and having deep conversations, sharing with you, the women I am so blessed to know and who inspire me, especially as we navigate through this thing in our world today. I'm a soulful woman and wealth coach and healer, helping heart-centered entrepreneurial women heal their self-worth, embody their soul purpose, and create sustainable business with heart. And I created this program to highlight amazing women that I come across and connect with. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. So today I'm super, super excited. I'm, we're interviewing a beautiful, a beautiful soul that I've gotten to know, um, Corby Furrow. And our topic today is not okay in the in 2015, Corby's world shifted when she lost her job and her identity after 24 years, or so she thought. It sent her into an unexpected healing journey that changed the way she saw herself. Broken, an imposter, not good enough, to a deep knowing she is good enough. Was never broken and can be herself. Today she, she brings that to clients. Corby is a transformational catalyst with Radiant Core Solutions. She helps women who are stuck in fear, doubt, and worry find their joy. Corby has a dance her and practical way of working clients and loves to bring humor and laughter to her work. She is a certified executive coach, a master EFT trainer candidate, a certified chartered professional of human resources, speaker, facilitator, and best-selling author, uh, but her favorite title is that of grandma. All of the love and joy with no parental responsibility. I love that. Welcome, Harvey. It's so good to have you here. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dixie. I so appreciate this. It's been a wonderful journey we've had. Well, I know. It certainly has been. So tell me, so where, where are you in the world today? I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, getting a little bit of misty rain, but uh, it's beautiful here and uh, yeah, happy to be on the show with you. Awesome. Thanks for being here. All right. So we're just going to dive right on into things. So we have this, a little bit of background about you uh, and I'd love to kind of start a little bit back. So how did you get to be, you talked about leaving your job, having corporate uh, transition time, which I know has been my background as well. And so many people can relate to that, especially now, you know, mm -hmm. leaving what they knew, leaving identities um, and, and you've created something so beautiful. So I'd love mm -hmm. to, for you to share where, where you came from, how you got into coaching, um, what, what spurred you into this direction? Right. Well, yeah, if we go way back, I think I've always been a coach. Um, mm -hmm. Even as like when as a teenager, I would coach teams, play on teams. Um, people were always coming to talk to me uh, with their problems and felt comfortable with me. So it was kind of a natural evolution, I guess, is what I'll say. And as part of my career, you know, moved along, um, I became into human resources, which is dealing with a lot of people, people coming to coach me. And I slowly worked my way up the ladder and, and ended up in Edmonton here as a director of HR for a mining company. And um, after a year, we were part of a merger. And after a year, I was without a job. And um, it was shocking. It was deflating. You know, it, it, um, it was, it was, like I said, it lost my identity because I was so wrapped up and that's who I was, right? What's the first thing people ask you is like, what do you do? Like, what's your job? <laughs> and it's like, it's not like, who are you? It's like, what is your job? How are you tied to that? Yeah. So once that happened to me, um, you know, and it gave me, I w I'm actually very grateful for that on many levels because as an HR person, I had to, you know, let a lot of people go and um, put them on a different journey, right? Freeing them to yeah. do what they, they yeah, what want at that time. But now I appreciate what it's like on that other side because it, it is very devastating. And um, you just feel, or I felt very lost, you know, like the, the rug was pulled out from under me. I didn't know, I thought, that's it. I know nothing, I'm of no value. I can't get another job, <laughs> you know, and it was this whole spiral for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good thing is I had supports that I didn't even realize that I had um, around me. And so um, I had an outplacement uh, person that I, I worked with from the business side, and now she got to work with me trying to find another job. 
And so she put me in contact with people and, and I said, well, I, you know, I do enjoy coaching and I talked to other people and they talked about coaching. So this lady flew me out to, or didn't fly me, she had tickets to her live event. And she said, if you get to Toronto, I'll give, let, let you in on this event. So I did, which is very odd for me because that's, I mean, spending money and just going there and on blind faith. So I flew out there and um, when I was there that, that day, it was great information, but I was so lost within myself. They were asking people, you know, be brave and say, speak your truth and do all this stuff when I just wanted to hide under my chair thinking I was the only one and I, everybody's looking at me because I'd lost my job. You know, this is all that's going on in my head. But during that time, I met this, this couple of ladies and um, they just said, you know, we have this kind of beta program we're doing. It's like all about self-healing. And in that moment, it was like, this is what I need. This is why I'm here. It was like kind of like this big aha. So I just followed it and signed up for a six months course. And um, that's where my life really shifted. You know, it was about from August till October that that had happened. Um, so I had three months of just waffling around thinking, oh, I had to get more education. I had to, you know, try for every single job out of desperation that there was mm -hmm. and um, failing miserably on all of it because I did not believe in myself through that whole thing. <laughs> So when I found that, it was like, this is why I'm here. It wasn't for this other coaching piece. It was this. So when I came back to it, you know, they started working on the personal thing and threw in this little thing called emotional freedom techniques. Mm -hmm. And so after I'd gone through that and it was like shifting things that I thought I dealt with, mm -hmm. you know, from way back when, because I'd read the books and I'd done the work, of course I'm <laughs> healed. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it was just like, but this time it felt like released and gone. And so it was like, wow, what, what is this thing? And so that began my journey into this coaching world and healing world um, where I, I did my personal work for six months. And out of that, it gave me clarity to become a coach. So then I went to Royal Roads, got my executive coaching certificate. And then as I was starting to leave into the real world and all the other fears of I'm not good enough, I can't do this, how can I make money? And that's where we met was on my journey to help me along through that piece of it. And then, um, yeah, and I haven't stopped since. So it's like, I just so love where I'm at now and what a gift it was for me to lose my job. Mm -hmm. And I said, I think the gift for people would be to lose a job and not have it for 20 or 40 years because I didn't know I could survive that, right? Because everything was tied up into it. It was horrible. But when you've been through it, then it's like, of course I can get back up on my feet. Of course I can reinvent or do whatever, something different. So that's kind of where it went so it it did tie for me the pieces of being a coach and being a helper all into this beautiful package that i can now you know bring out to other people in the world mm -hmm. well i think like you hit on so many pa powerful powerful pieces and i kind of i just want to go back and you know just before we kind of rewind a little bit yeah. i think you know because so many people are going you know have lost their jobs right now mm -hmm. uh, they feel like they've lost a part of themselves their identity yeah. and it and it really is um you lose your lifelines you you lose those daily connections right it's even just the high in the coffee room it's the yep. hey, i've got a problem you know and just like you you cultivate these relationships even though they feel short you yeah. know, you just, you, you just, just have none of it when you yeah, leave. And it's ended very abruptly. Usually. Ended very you know, abruptly. And, you, and you become all of a sudden this thing that they've got to get out of the organization. And it's like, oh, how now knowing what I know now, like what a disservice we do to everybody. We put everybody into trauma, into grief and don't allow anyone to process it. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I, I want to share a little bit about my story. I, I it's, when I left my corporate job, I was I was also building my business on, while doing that. But it was um, I was I knew that a package was coming. I knew I knew that it was happening. And even though I knew it was still like showing up every day, you had to wait, you had to wait, you had to wait. And the day you know the day that it happened. I actually had everything kind of lined up for that day in other things anyway. Like it was just such a, you know, just a magic, you know, every synchronicity, everything mm -hmm. kind of lined up. And I went into work that morning and this was the first time that I'd like fully received the package. Like, mm. 
you know, it's and real. like in, for real in corp, you know, in that corporate environment, like I had been laid off and I had had other situations, but it was all seasonal. It was like, you knew, you knew, and then, but we still stayed fr like, there was just this different conversation. Yes. Um, but with that experience, it was very, um, I felt, I thought I was good. And then it was when they take you out of the office. And of course you have to go through the reception area Everyone, <laughs> and then um and it was interesting because there was a group of people in in the reception area and a couple of people were like oh hey dixie like i need to talk to you and hr is like nope nope yeah. like just trying to be the buffer no comments no nothing hustling me towards the elevator he pushed the button for me kind of waited your little box of stuff <laughs> I, I didn't even get my box of stuff you didn't get a box of stuff Actually, yeah no. that's a whole other story i'll share okay, yeah. uh i knew i knew uh, the, anyway that's a whole other story but um the my the office that i was in was in a, a very big building downtown calgary um right in the center of a mall so as soon as you come out of the ba the elevator bank, you literally walk into this massive open area of shopping stores and it felt so big and mm -hmm. I felt so small. And I remember standing in the middle, I remember exactly where I was standing. I remember the store I was standing beside and I, and it was, I knew I was going to my car, you know, I knew that I was making my way there, but it was that moment of just like, well, shit. Now what? Yeah. Uh, and I felt my nervous system definitely went into shock. Yep. And I felt kind of weird and queasy and and awkward. And I, even though intellectually I knew I was going to my car, I didn't really know what I was supposed to do next. Yep. Even though I had my day lined up, it was, and it was probably, I don't know, maybe like a couple of minutes, maybe not even that long, but it felt like a lifetime. Yeah. And I just, I remember I, I literally spun around, like I was like taking everything in and I'm just like, well, what do I do now? Like, this is real. It's too real. I don't know yeah. if I'm ready for it. Yeah, that. the rest is like, it's, it's like anything. It's like, even though you logically know, it's not over till it's over. Not you know, and when, in that moment, there's nothing that prepares yeah. you for that, whether it's a death, whether it's a loss of a job or loss of something else. It's, it's yeah. the fact that all change has a grieving process. It does. Yeah. Well, and it wasn't even the grieving yet. It was the shock. No, it's the right? shock yet. Yes. That's, yeah. I literally, I felt tingly. I yeah. felt numb. I felt because it was literally like a cord being ripped out and yeah. understanding energy and, and knowing what I know now. Mm -hmm. um, and even I had an idea then too, but now looking back, I get it. Like I get it's, yeah. it's an energetic unplug. That's not yeah. necessarily of your own. It's like you've been you know, yeah. put in a bag, thrown <laughs> into a car, and then someone just drove away. <laughs> exactly. Know? And never to return again type thing. Never to return again. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And it was just, it was that experience. But luckily I had a networking event lined up that afternoon. So I literally left and went to the networking wow. event. Um, the lawyer was, you know, there was a lawyer in the group. Thank God for the lawyers in the groups, you know, and I just said, here's my package. Do you mind yeah. like talking me through this and having a conversation? And so he sat with me and, um, but it was just, it was like, wow, I'm really starting my new life. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I was, I was ready for the new life part, but it was mm -hmm. that, you know, and I probably grieved, like I cried uncontrollably, unconsolably, yeah. um, at stoplights. <laughs> you know, oh, absolutely, perfect. yeah. And I've got my stuff to do, and all of a sudden, just like yeah. uncontrollable waterworks. And I, and I go to events and parties, and I didn't know anyone there, and I'd be sitting in the corner taking everything in and sobbing in the corner. <laughs> yeah, oh, I can totally relate to that because it is. It's just a loss, and that process needs to move through us. And mm -hmm. yeah, and it, and it is different because yeah, it's like how do I shop anywhere now? Yeah, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> Yes. And, yeah. and that part of how do I introduce myself now? Mm -hmm. and, and this is when everybody of, asks you, what do yes, you do? What do you do? And it's and like, nothing. I'm fired. I'm no useless. It's like, what do I do? <laughs> well, and I try to change the conversation, to be honest. But, you know, sometimes it's like, the what do you do? It's like, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I tend to ask other questions. And I yeah, sometimes I forget, but that I do try to consciously shift yes. that. 
because yes. we do and that's part of the new way anyway this is a whole other conversation too. <laughs> um, and i have this a lot with with many of my colleagues and and clients and and friends is why can't we just introduce ourselves as who we are and just be okay with it yeah absolutely and that's what i think what you're doing what i'm doing is like providing platforms for mm -hmm. us to be okay and and learn that because the other stuff is so conditioned into mm -hmm. us that we believe that's the only way and we believe the stories even though it doesn't feel in alignment mm -hmm. but now we're learning to oh this doesn't feel right why isn't it feeling right and what can i do to shift that exactly yeah so so i wanted to go back so to share a little bit more about that experience for you when you left when you um left your, your career your corporate career especially at the peak because you were at a pretty high profile mm -hmm. position yeah and and not just that i mean just being at that that level of your career that perceived successful point I and mean, maybe mm -hmm. you have some different insights about it but it is it, that it's a growth it's monetary growth it's yeah. a deeper uh, responsibility uh, a higher level of leadership um, mm -hmm. And especially, you know, just starting over again. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about the process that you went through just in your own personal journey before you found the tools that helped you move through it. Yeah. Well, for me, like I said, it was devastated, you know, kind of shocked going to the car, crying in there thinking, oh my gosh, is everybody looking at me now? And they all know, you know, just feeling that, you know, upset. But for me, it was, it was really, it was that realization that I really thought or, or how much I didn't believe in myself, mm -hmm. right? Even though I was very successful and for me actually getting to the director level um, pushed that my boundaries so much, you know, I didn't know why because it was just because I didn't believe in myself. It was like, I was almost panicking inside mm -hmm. because I couldn't see the worth that everybody else did. Even though I could do the stuff and that, I didn't believe it. So by me getting kind of here you are front and center, before I could hide behind other supervisors and leaders and executives, right? But now it's like, now I'm in the, the frame of it. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, that was really pushing on, but I didn't have the tools to recognize or know that, right? Mm -hmm. So when I did lose my job, it's just like there, proof, it's in the pudding, you know, forget any accomplishments I've done or what I've done, because that's what it felt like for me was just, everything was just a failure, mm -hmm. you know? And even though I'd done um, lots of personal work, but it was to the point where, you know, I read the books, I did some of the reframing, but I didn't really take it in right. fully into my soul of what that actually meant for me, right? Yes. And so, yeah, it was at the height of my career. I come out here. Um, I'd been in Edmonton for a year when I lost my job. So my whole identity, my whole world was all the people at work. Yeah. So from that day, it's like, boom, gone, right? Because, I mean, I didn't hang out with them after work, it was all work related, you know, and it was a busy job because mm -hmm. in my mind, you know, I thought you had to be available 24 seven and, you know, work, work, work and be busy, busy, busy. And um, so it was misaligned. Mm -hmm. And the other part for me also being, you know, put out in front and center was that um, the higher I went, the further I got from the people mm -hmm. and the people are my heart. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I started feeling that disconnect. I was discomfort, you know, uncomfortable with it. But at the same time, it's like, well, you can't leave a good paying job. You know, look at where you're at. Like, you'd be crazy to do this, but what else would I do? I have no idea. So even though I was kind of formulating these things, um, but I wasn't brave enough to shift it. And I didn't have the tools that I needed to feel good about myself and understand where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I was really in a spin. Like I had no idea what to do. You know, I sat on the couch days and, you know, for, well, at first it was like gathering the information, doing the legal stuff I had to do, you know, that was fine. I had a purpose. Then after that, it was like, mm. what do I do? Who am I? Like, I had no idea. I'd go to interviews and they'd start out all positive. Then I'd be like, and they'd be like, well, what do you do? And I'd be like, I don't know. You know, they'd be like, next. <laughs> it's just like, because I was so full of fear at that point, right? So I took... I took extra university courses. I took, you know, anything because I thought, well, I'm, I'm not good enough. I ha this is what I must need, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to fill that void. Um, during that time, I was lucky enough to meet some ladies who like said, oh, well, we need some HR work. Why don't you help us with that? So it's like, okay, I started getting, you know, get their support. And, and one of them was a coach too, and one had her own business. So they were really helpful and, you know, shifting my mindset and helping me to 
move forward. Uh, the outplacement lady was really good, you know, helping talking about emotions and where we need to go and how to focus to, you know, maybe what I want to do. So that was all, all good, but still I was stumbling through everything. Mm -hmm. And then until I finally found that thing in Toronto there, and it was just, it was like, wow, there's, I had no idea that I was hanging on to so much stuff and, mm -hmm. and to just understand where these beliefs started for me and that I'd been carrying and trying to prove my whole life, you know, and came to that pinnacle moment saying, there it is, there's all the proof you need, you know, <laughs> just go under a rock and hide now for the rest of your life. <laughs> But so, yeah, like uh, it was just floundering for like four months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and, and I think we need that time too. I think, you know, and, and you made a statement before too, um, how you sent out tons and tons of resumes. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember a time in my life too, where, you know, I just, I was desperate for a job and yes. looking and I, and I would send out hundreds of resumes, mm -hmm. not a single call. No. like not like crickets yeah and and i again i look back but it was every time i knew i wanted a job i would just go and apply for that job and i would get mm -hmm. it and right. it was just like okay so i have i've always had that natural ability <clears throat> i didn't realize it was a thing yeah <laughs> when i look back at my entire career job the right job that i desired literally landed in my lap if yeah. you will. Right. I mean, I went and found it. I applied for it, but it was just like, I researched it. I knew that that was mm. something that I wanted. Yeah. And, and it's not coming from that desperate energy of, yeah. I just have to have something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, and that's the challenge too. I think we, um, people miss that, that time we need to have that time of unwinding. Yes. And, and usually what I end up telling a lot of my clients that I work with, especially in transitional times, <clears throat> is take that month, two months, four months, whatever it oh, is, because yes. you have to allow your nervous system to readjust. Yes. You have to allow your body to go through the grieving process, the anger, the bartering, the, oh my God, what do I do now? Because you do, you kind of spin out for a little while. Yeah. And yeah, you are a little, you know, it feels out of control because you kind of are, because there's, you know, there's a lot of intangibility items Absolutely. you're just not sure where to put your energy right yeah. and what gives us safety is that feeling of control right before i knew what my day was where i was going to be how it was going to end where we go and now it was like free for all yeah it's <laughs> so, like yeah. freedom yeah and what do we do with that yes and i think like when you said that i'm winding time it probably took me six to maybe eight months before i finally felt like yeah. You know, it wasn't this. It took a year. Oh, yeah. And, it's, and the higher, well, the higher up you go, the more responsibility you have, but also the longer yeah. you're with a company, uh, mm -hmm. it takes a minimum, a minimum year, two yeah. to three years to really yeah. disengage, to start to design your new body, right? To mm -hmm. defunct, de stress, de unplug, all of that. Yeah. Because um, it's years and years and years of programming, right? Absolutely. So, like, so layer by layer by layer starts to shift and come out of the nervous system. Yeah. Um, and I think, especially people who go into retirement, is a whole mm -hmm. that's a whole different thing. Yeah, it's the same, same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Because your way of life is now changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and what you had control of. Yes, yeah, so they they have had some time to make a decision, mm -hmm. and then there are those people who just, in their mind, and I've worked with many of these people too, where, oh, I just gave my retirement date. I'm so excited for retirement. I'm like, well, what's your plan? And no plan. Like, yeah. No <laughs> plan. No planning whatsoever. Yeah. And and then they they quit and they go into depression or the body and their body breaks down. And that's what mm -hmm. I see very consistently is yeah. from all that pent up stress, regardless, because you're absolutely to go, go, go. You need that that time to really deprogram mm -hmm. your your functions, your body, your mind, and and then then you can start to sort of navigate into something more. Yeah, absolutely. So, and what I love about our story is like very, very corporate experience to totally into the healing and coaching aspects. Yeah. And, you know, it's two totally different worlds. Yeah. And it's kind of, and I don't know how you feel, but when, 
like I it's like I can dip in and dip out I don't need to be there anymore yeah and and that's the beautiful thing is is that you can have effect on it and you know work in that but it's not yours to stay in it's yeah. like you can uplift it and leave and go to the next thing exactly yeah <laughs> Because it needs a lot of help. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. It, it, everybody needs a lot of help right now. Yeah. yeah. How would you say, so especially in this time right now, like we've, yes. we've shifted gears so quickly. Yes. How has your practice, how has your business shifted or what are you doing to navigate that? Yes. Um, when the COVID hit, it definitely shifted very quickly because people were like, wanting to know how to navigate this right and wanting tools so I was very thankful that people were recognizing that for one mm -hmm. and reaching out so I had put on uh, several free webinars just to help people just manage that everyday stress you know we called it emotional first aid just trying to give people tools to go through it and it was interesting as the weeks went by you know it was the shock and then it was kind of the coming to realization that we're in this and then it was kind of the feelings were coming up you know after that initial shock kind of like when we're losing our job right and then that anger and stuff that you know why do we have to be here why not and then the realization oh it's like we're not so bad and then it's like oh now i'm weepy and teary and because we're still in this and now i have to homeschool my kids and do all this other stuff so it's been this roller coaster of things going on so um, for me to navigate, I'm lucky like because I still have my coaches that I work with as well as the groups that I help. Um, it's very freeing because we allow our emotions and whatever's going to be happening with them and process that. Whereas I, I, some of the corporate people I'm working with, you know, they're all like, I'm fine. I'm managing it. I'm getting by. And you can just feel the tension as what's going on instead of being, it's okay to be not okay, as we said. And, and still deal with this because um, so many of us think, you know, we have to go right to the positive and everything's got to be great. And I'm so grateful for it. It's like, no, no, we need to honor where you are so that you can get to that grateful piece. Mm -hmm. I've had days, I had days, you know, oh. I, just, I mean, I have, I have a physical office and I had to close down and yes. you know, the day I, I denied it, you know, and I, the, you know, I finally decided, I'm like, no, stop you know, it's time. And I, I literally closed the door. And again, it was that whole thing. It was the same, a similar experience where locking that door and not knowing when I'm coming back. Absolutely. To, you know, I sat in my car again, you know, I just, I couldn't drive. I yeah. literally sat in my car, had my tears. Then I moved, you know, that I had a place to be. So then mm -hmm. I had to move on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, but I've had, I, even now I'm just like, oh my God, like, when can we connect? You know, yeah, it's like, when absolutely. can we connect? You know, yeah. it's that, that's, that's the part of it. Yeah. Um, I think two so people great. think that, you know, once we start feeling good, I should feel good all the time. And it's yeah. like, no, if you get five minutes or a day, yeah. great, <laughs> you yeah. know, and it's okay if it's really shitty the next day, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just to be okay with where you're at because there is no rhyme or reason to where we're in. Mm -hmm. And, and that's exactly what it's supposed to be. It's the highs, it's the lows, and it's the, the messiness in between. And, when and it's the knowing that, exactly. sorry, it's the knowing that we can get through this. You know, that's the whole thing. It's like, yeah, it, it is messy, but we, we know we're resilient because we will yeah. get to the other end. And we need tools and help and support to do that. Mm -hmm. And we just don't know what it's look, what it, we, I, nobody knows what it's going to look like right no, now, nobody, no. right? And we're seeing a whole bunch of stuff that makes no sense and, and it's spiraling people out again. Yeah. But even in that, you know, it's, it's a, a solution for what they know right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's in, one of the important keys too, is to take solutions for what we can have control on right now, what we know to be true regardless of what it is. So if you're feeling yeah. sad, mad, you know, angry, pissed off, frustrated, rageful, you know, give yourself permission to go into that and then yeah. move into the next. Yeah. And also there's the other spectrum where like a lot of the introverts are like, woohoo, thankfully I don't have to go out and see the people and I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> that too. <laughs> exactly. And then there's a bit of anxiety thinking, oh my gosh, we're going back to where I have to go out and meet people. Right. So it's almost the opposite happening. And in the beginning, that's what I saw too. Those that were enjoying it were almost afraid to say it because it's like, I really like this, but I'm afraid somebody's going to like bop me on the head because I really like it. Yeah. But it's like, it's just honoring everybody where they're at. Mm -hmm. 
And I would say most of the conversations I've had with people are very much similar. That yes. they are so in my realms and groups. We're all we're managing it. We're navigating through it. We're collectively, especially the women that I know. I I know the men too, but most of the people I know are women. We've mm -hmm. been not jumping on Zoom. We've been connecting. Mm -hmm. It's like hosting webinars and events and online networking events so that we can you know come together in larger communities there's yeah. been so 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 many blessings out of this but um let's go back to some how so working with eft um sorry i i don't know that you actually said what it was called so why don't you oh, yeah. introduce a little bit about uh, um the techniques systems right. that, that assisted you yeah so it's what they call emotional freedom techniques and so it's been around about 25 years now and it started out it's kind of like it was one of those woo woo things but now as the years have gone there's been lots of scientific research things like that that prove that it's good <laughs> i have a, a co-star here um <laughs> that prove that um it, it works right and um Sorry. <laughs> Bring them in. It's all good. Let's yeah. Get of it. yeah. It, um, so what it is, it's using our energy system within our body. So as we know, when we start to get stuck, when we are stuck in our emotions, that anger, that rage, that even joy, whatever it is, um, it's not bad or good. It's just emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we learn to um, allow that to flow in our body, then we have the healing that takes place because we're we're releasing where we're stuck in the pain and bringing us back to the light or the the possibilities again mm -hmm. and so with eft it's tapping it's like literally instead of using acupuncture needles we're using our fingertips and pressure points on our body um, specifically uh, designed by our bodies to mm -hmm. allow this energy to move and um, it's it's amazing like you know, just an hour, an hour session of tapping can reduce anxiety by 45%. Mm -hmm. You know, happiness increases by 31%. Mm -hmm. They did a 15 minute study on people with post traumatic stress disorder, and within that 15 minutes, 30% had lost the like the effects that it had on it. So it's mm -hmm. there's so much science that's coming out uh, regularly that it's so exciting that you know this is a, a tool that anybody can use. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm using now is what we call conscious EFT and that's from the National Emotional Freedom Techniques Training Institute and that's to taking a trauma-informed approach on it because when EFT uh, came out into the world it was you know they started at the grassroots and said here's this wonderful tool everybody go use it so they're like yay and then people started to get traumatized because it works so well but people weren't ready right to the depths mm -hmm. it was going to go so then they got scared of it right mm -hmm. so but they didn't know that at that time but we've evolved and have learned that right and so now it, it's uh the, the, with this conscious eft we use a four-phased approach so it's like using the stressors of the here and now mm -hmm. and um, seeing if we can clear that and if you can get you know your, the life you're looking for in that then why would we need to go deep digging any deeper mm -hmm. and then we can go into you know adult traumas and then um, childhood if needed but mm -hmm. you know making sure that people are trained and, and educated on what needs to be done there Beautiful. and then we leave yeah like the tapping part is what we can use to help people be resilient that's your self-empowerment right where mm -hmm. you can tap in that moment just like deep breathing or yoga or reading a book or going for a walk mm -hmm. you know you've got the power at your fingertips to just tap and go as, as you go along Mm -hmm. So in your own, I, I'm a huge fan. I love emotional freedom technique. It's one of my, uh, there's so many different types of modalities and it's definitely one in there for me. Uh, what would you say was the biggest change you saw in yourself? Like when you were first experiencing it, what was, you know, what was your physical or what was, did you have like an actual breakthrough? Like, wow. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. This solidified it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I remember the first time I flew there and, you know, and then they tell us to start tapping and I was like, what the heck is this? It's like, I should think I should go, but my plane ticket doesn't leave for a couple of days. So I guess I'll stay. <laughs> but it was, yeah, as we were tapping and, and some old, you know, childhood uh, memories had come up about, you know, when my mom had left and my mom and dad got divorced and the beliefs that I started to believe, you know, that not good enough piece. Mm -hmm. And, um, as I was tapping, you know, and, and I started crying and sobbing, I'm like, what is going on here? Because mm -hmm. um, I thought I dealt with all of that, of course. Mm -hmm. But it was like I felt like somebody actually lifted a thousand pounds off of me. Mm -hmm. And I'd never felt that before. And it was just like, 
wow, I can breathe. And you know, you could just feel as you tap, you, the body would start to take a big breath. And it's like, finally, you're listening to us. You're feeling us. You're allowing this to go, you know. And then um, the real test was when, you know, I'd worked on some stuff. And then that trigger physically was in front of me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't react. And it was like, wow, and I have no need to react. And I have no like boom to it. And it was like, wow, this, there's something to this stuff. This really works. <laughs> So yeah, so there's proof, you know, over and over as I do my work. And even now, like I said, we never quit doing our own work. And because we always run up into new levels, right? And, and as you see that shift, because when we're so stuck in our beliefs, we can't see anything else, right? I believe this to be true 100%. Mm-hmm. And then as you work on it, it's like, oh, well, that's because they told me I had to believe this. So I carried this on. What is true for me? Now I start to get that possibility opening up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the choice. Well, it creates choice, right? We don't Absolutely realize it does. Choice and then it creates choice. Yeah. 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 And that's, you know, I've had this conversation lately too with several different people where, you know, it's like, um, for me, I'm not a rah, rah, rah person. Like, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a cheerleader. I'm supportive, but I'm not like high energy. Mm-hmm. When I, when I come out, it's like, you know, I just kind of come out. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I go to a lot of events and, you know, and, and, and there's coaches and people and that's part, maybe part of their personality and whatever. And it's true for, for some, but it's that j- jarring energy of you've got to stand up and you've got to yeah. make a choice and you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And yeah. it's just like, I know for me, when I'm ready to make a move, I will make a move. Yeah. And over time, you know, as I've done my own healing work. And I've seen where blockages are. It's like, um, and I've, I've worked with other coaches and I've seen other people and they're just like, you know, until you, when you're, if you're not ready to show up the way that I need you to show up, then I can't work with you, which is true. Um, yeah. It's that whole, you know, it's, it's learning as, as people, like, it's okay to be in the messy stuff. Yeah. But we have to bring it back down to a level because it's not always high, high action, high achieve. No. No, and, and when we, we are so used to forcing in our mm-hmm. society, exactly. we have to force there, feel the fear, do it anyways, you know, and, and just get to your goals and make the big audacious goal. But what's happening inside of us, that fear that comes up and our protector parts come up mm-hmm. and those beliefs that kept us safe. Now they're saying like, you're, you know, just push through those beliefs. Well, that's your whole security system. Mm-hmm. So if we don't honor that, why they are there, you know, we haven't thought about them for years because that's just what we do. You know, now we're, we're forced to look at them, but if we can force that change, but it won't be sustainable. Mm-hmm. So if we can gently and say, look at, I know this part was built for me to protect me at some point or, or give me self-preservation or whatever it was. And if we can see that, then we can say, oh, what do I need to do now so that I can feel safe as I move forward into this? Mm-hmm. You know, that's like when I go back to my job, I was moving to a new position. I wasn't feeling safe because everything I'd done, all of a sudden now I'm, in the limelight right and it's like that's not safe for me Mm -hmm. but i didn't know any tools or anything about that but it's like you just go do that and everybody's looking on the outside woohoo this is great you've made it you're you know you've you're successful it's like your life is perfect well it's not (laughs) we hide behind we can make it look anything we want but underneath Mm -hmm. we are shaking and trying to figure it out so that's why it's so important to have that nervous system um and that trauma informed um, information about why we do the things we do, because if we can go gently through it and go with the flow with it, we will have sustainable change. You feel the power of you, you, not the power that of the forcing part, you know, Mm -hmm. you're more grounded. You can, you can, I mean, not to say that people who force don't achieve because there's, there is a lot there, but there's still a big mess going on inside. Yeah. And I, and I find it's fractured and fragmented. They're successful in one part and not mm-hmm. successful in another. Absolutely. And, um, and I, and I find it with myself too, you know, it, it's that I go through movements and, and this is what I'm very aware in my cycles in my personal cycles where I have cycles of deep rest and, and then I have cycles of massive movement. And yeah. so I really honor those times yes. more so now of that deep rest because my business isn't meant to move the way that I want it to. Yeah. There, I'm not supposed to do anything. I'm supposed to just rest and, and really take in my resources. 
because when it's time to move, I move and yeah. it's like, right. So you yeah. need and to cultivate, have all that energy yeah. so that you can actually move. And I, and again, it's that, you know, the waves of life, the ups and downs yeah. and it's energy, right. That energy movement. Yeah. yeah. And honoring the energy movement yeah. when, when it's right for you, when it's the time to strike, everything will be in alignment yeah. for you to strike. But until that, you'll have the energy to do that. Yeah. You'll have the full energy. You'll yeah. have the, um, the capacity, you'll have the support, you'll have the yeah. direction. And it's just like apply, implement action. Yeah. Result. And, and yeah, exactly. And I think that's where people don't understand because they think, well, if I don't have the force and the pressure and the drive, nothing will get done. It's usually that all or nothing thinking. Mm -hmm. So I love how you put it because it is, you will have all the energy that you need because you're in the flow of it. Then, you know, it's not about, Oh, I'm all peace and calm. It's like, no, I've got the energy to build when I need to build and I can repair when I need to repair. Exactly. Very powerful. I love what you said. That's a, a great statement. Mm -hmm. So t I want to go back into um, just a little bit more about you and, and share some of your mentors and people, cause especially moving into directorship in corporate, regardless, mm -hmm. self-help, you mentioned some self-help things that you were doing. Mm -hmm. Come into your life at your turning points um, that helped direct you, mentor you, um, or the, the most impactful people that came into your life at different yeah. points. You know, and I have so many, you know, and I, I, at the time I couldn't appreciate all, all that was there, but I've always kind of been, you know, like a ping pong game, but bouncing off of these people as they held this space for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it goes right from my grandmothers to my father to um, usually any job that I had, there was always somebody seeing more in me than I saw in myself. Mm -hmm. you know, and they'd give me that nudge and I'd be like, okay, because I was thinking, well, that's pleasing them, even though it's part of me wanted to do this, but part of me was really scared to do it. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, like, like I've had bosses and um, people all along the way that just kept pulling me up, pulling me up further and further, you know, and offering it to me and giving me the guidance. It was like, I've been an apprentice for so long um, that it, it, even though it's, it's kind of like I was the, you know, you see the athletes running, but you never see the camera guy running along with them, right? And they're doing the same thing. So I was like the camera guy was running along thinking I wasn't achieving anything, right. but I would get promotions and get a new thing and, and get new mentoring waves through there. And everybody was just so gracious with their time and what they sh shared with me, you know, that it allowed me to get up their belief in what they saw allowed the next person to believe in me to, to move me up the ladder and, and keep going. You know, they'd throw, I'd have to get my uh, human resources designation and I had to, you know, take other courses along the way. And I did all that, even though I was freaking out because I thought I'm still not good enough for any of this stuff, but I, I kept doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it just led me to where I am now. Like say, you were one of my coaches that was introduced into my life. And I, I still have, you know, uh, the tribe of practitioners that I went through. Um, my mentor currently with, with Nancy Forrester at the national EFT training Institute. Um, and it, there's just so many that, like I said, everywhere I have been, I've never been without a mentor. Mm, yes. know, um, I it, love it's... that you said that because <clears throat> I find it's, it's interesting. Um, I think it's such an important piece. Uh, and I share, I had this conversation in one of my other interviews and we were talking about, um, like, I didn't know. I didn't know that I needed a mentor when I was younger, but I, no. I never had a lot of people mentor me along the way. It was just kind of like, you know, whatever, go do your thing, you know, oh, well, you know, um, not a lot of encouragement, even from teachers and instructors. Right. And, um, and I'd find that person and then I'd like hang on to them because yes. they're so juicy. And then they're like, Dixie, like, get away from me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're leech. And I'm yeah. like, oh. I'm like, okay, so I'd see these little pockets of things. I'm like, well, this isn't working. And it, and when I was in oil and gas, it was really when <clears throat> I discovered about mentorships, like, mm -hmm. because I was seeing it and I'm like, well, how do I get one? Yeah. You know? And a lot of, and unfortunately, you know, in the earlier careers, it's like, well, I want to do better. I, how do I do this? And, and there wasn't really a lot of cheerleading for mm -hmm. me. Um, it was just like, just go to your job and stop asking questions. <laughs> yeah. It's such a disservice when you've got somebody who's just ripe for like, give me knowledge and I'll do it, you know? 
and I had one boss once and I, I just, I did everything. I had everything done. And I went to him, I said, you know, he's like, what do you mean you got everything done? I'm like, I had, I mean, I'm, I'm a farm girl, you know, it's yeah. like, you can't sit still for five minutes. Nope. So, I mean, I had everything that office, like within the first week of me being there, I pretty much worked myself out of a job. Yeah. And he's like, never, ever ask me for more work to do ever again. And he wow. punished me for asking for more work. Yeah. And I was just like, this is really weird. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. I know. And, and that's, you know, his own stuff, whatever he's working on. Right. And, yeah. and that's where it starts in our careers and stuff where we start feeling bad about ourselves or we say, screw this and I'll go do something. Like it it mm -hmm. forces us into choice, you know, mm -hmm. but that's where I can see now sitting back where I am, like, say, if I was to step back into my old life now with what I know, like, oh, I would be so different and it would be the conversations and the interactions, you know, so it's just more confident because I'm me now. I'm not trying to be what everybody or what I thought everybody was expecting, right? Because it's only what we think, you know, people aren't telling us we've been shown, you know, by society and our families, mm -hmm. how we need to act, but really ultimately it comes down as what our perception of that is. Mm -hmm. I think unconsciously I used to go, I used to go to the, the elders of the group, sorry guys, um, <laughs> but, but they did. And, you know, I, I had some prestigious positions too, where we had people on staff, they hired them just for their knowledge yeah. because they were retired from their job, but they were brought on staff just to be, just to be accessible to mentor the group. Yeah. But there wasn't yeah. really any structure there. And again, what a disservice. I oh. took total opportunity. I used to go and sit in their offices and pick their brain. And, yeah. Because you know, they have conversations. And yes. Because it's such an untapped wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. and perspective, you know, and, and mm -hmm. it, if people utilize it properly, like even how much more successful mm -hmm. that we could be. I agree. And I think to me, that's why the coaching industry is so powerful. Uh -huh. um, you can call it coaching, mentoring. I mean, there's, there's different aspects to it for sure and different definitions, but we need this more than ever yeah. and we need it for all generations. Like we yes. need um, the older generations to come and teach the younger, you know, the yes. millennials still need direction and the younger generations under them too, you know, the new Absolutely. wave of adults, yeah. of adulthood. And I just, I believe... And I've kind of watched pockets of that in my career where I've seen the 20 somethings, you know, and I get pockets of them, you know, they come for like a little tiny time. And then, you know, as they grew into different stages and some of them disappeared completely. And, and then I'd see them again three or four years later, you yeah. know, they're in a different stage of their life. And I, and I think that's one of the biggest joys for me is helping those people who want to be helped yes you know, and you know who are ready to i will give my time if yeah. if you want and you apply and you implement i i love love mentoring yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah and it's so invaluable and like you said it, it's it, you can't gain that knowledge in a book you need mm -hmm. to have the people to tell you the experience and what's outside the written stuff on the page like what is what's the reality of what we need to do and how we need to show up and be Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. So on that note, how would you feel? So what, what do you feel needs to shift or how can you, how do you see the, your work, um, contributing more on a bigger in, or in a different direction or on a bigger scale? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, like resilience and emotional, um, fitness and emotional psychology and psychological safety is all where it's heading right and those are a good piece of it but i think it's that humanness again you know bringing in um the human ground roots level again where we can have conversations where we get to a point where if you and i aren't agreeing on something it doesn't go to the water cooler and say oh did you see that dixie or did you see that corby or mm -hmm. you know it's like okay we're having a disagreement what are the facts here and keep out the emotional bits and know that geez, you're a person I respect and you wouldn't do that to hurt me. So what, you know, but we often get that very personal mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we haven't done our work, especially that's what I think of when I was at the corporate, right? It's so convoluted with everybody's pain yeah, absolutely. that, you know, we need to learn how to, one is just have everyday conversations, not the hard conversations, just everyday true conversations. Mm -hmm. true conversations. We need to um, allow people to feel their emotions and not think they're weak and allow them, maybe somebody needs to have a cry for five minutes, 
get themselves together and then come back into the meeting and they go, how are you doing? I'm okay. I'm good now. Let's go on instead of thinking, oh, they're too emotional and I'm uncomfortable. So let's just get them out of the way. Mm -hmm. Right. That would, would be what I would see as healthy work spaces, you know, teaching our kids to value what they actually feel, but instead of being shut down, oh, you know, you don't need to cry over that. Or what are you so angry about? It's like, it's not about me to determine that for you. It's like, how do, how are we going to give the kids of today the tools so that they can process this stuff to get to the other side and know they'll be okay rather than, you know, becoming angry adults who are, you know, road rage and mm -hmm. um, walking off at, in, in the job interviews or whatever that's going on, right? I think we've lost that connection and community. So I think it's more important now than ever to bring that back to the grassroots and kind of start over and know that in order to make profits, we don't need to sacrifice humans for that. You know, yeah. Yeah. The, the joy and the, the power and the people will get you there all the time, but fear stops that and goes to deadlines and numbers and mm -hmm. things, thinking that we have to stop, you know, we're, we're saying one thing, but doing a different thing. Exactly. Yeah. But when we can align those things and know that it's okay. And, and sometimes, you know, just thinking from the corporate, we always had to make more profit, more profit, more profit. But, what if you made the same or what if one year you've got a little bit less, but it was okay. Cause you knew longer, right? Longer term, we're going to get more, yes. you know, just have a, a more balanced approach to mm -hmm. it, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, that's where I see our work being. And then, as you said, like just the people who are seeking the help, like from people like you, people like me is that we are there to help them in that transformation so that they can continue this work into the jobs that they do in the families they have and, and bring that, you know, to where we have that peace and, and flow within ourselves to know that we're all okay and that we can get through whatever we need to get through. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally agree. Thank you for that. So tell me a little bit more about um, how, how do you keep your mindset every day? What are some rituals or what are some techniques or tools that you use? Obviously, you have a beautiful modality that you that supports yes. you. Yeah, um, but it other, takes other mindset yeah. and rituals that you use on a daily basis. Yeah, definitely, because it's not nothing is the be all end all. It's the all together. Yeah. So for me, um, and it's been an, um, a love hate relationship with some of this stuff too. Mm -hmm. Is but what I find really works is like I do my tapping when I go out for my walk with my dog first thing. So my walk is is a, a big part of that. And I, I just tap and walk as I go and think about things and just kind of go over it. Um, I l love now, I can tell the difference on the days that I don't do my meditations mm -hmm. um, because that gets me really grounded, I'm finding. And um, I, I, like I said, I'll start and stop with that, but it, I really do um, enjoy that and I'm learning to embrace that more. And then um, another favorite of mine is doing the Donna Eden five minute energy routine. It just seems to set that energy flow properly. Mm -hmm. And um, so that I can manage because I mean, we're, we're the, the vehicle that our, our clients are using. So we need to make sure that we're energetic and clear and ready for them to, to mm -hmm. um, you know, bump up against so that we can yeah. direct and, and keep them, you know, where they need to go. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the main things I do. Um, you know, and getting out again in the evening to have another walk. I just love being in, in nature and getting out from the city where it doesn't feel like I'm in a city at all. Mm -hmm. And that's where I find I get the, the biggest piece out of that. Beautiful. Yeah. And where do you yeah. go for your inspiration? Who inspires you? Oh, so many. Well, like say people like you, you're, you're <laughs> setting out this beautiful group. Um, my group that I have of practitioners that I went through in 2016, a lot of friends that I have, um, there's just so many things to be inspired by every day, you know, and I see people that make efforts just to be kind, you know, and that inspires me too, because it doesn't take much. Like I saw on the trail walking and somebody had painted some rocks and somebody had put some signs up somewhere, just keep smiling, you know, or we'll get through this or, you know, it's just those little bits of love everywhere. But yeah, I have such, well, I have so many people that, a group that like say that just holds me and contains me and um, I'm just so appreciative of that, that, that it allows me the freedom to be who I am and the space that I need and if I need help, I know I can put it out there and I'll have somebody help me, you know, it, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Mm, I know, cultivating those communities and especially now I think we're, we're seeing that from a different place. Yes. You know, just where are... 
Um, and I, and I haven't mastered that yet. I, I know that's just something it's a journey. I'm working on. It is absolutely a journey and there's different pockets and the, and it's like, you know, unplugging from a certain community and it's like, you know, it, it's that trauma all over again. <laughs> it's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, pl you plug in hoping, you know, looking for those connections and looking for support and guidance and, you know, and, but who's, who's helping you when you need yeah. help. Right. Yeah. And, and you definitely need that because that is so key. Yeah. You know, a lot, my whole life was lived by the premise of I help you, but you can't help me. You know, it's like I can give, but I can't receive. Yeah. And little did I know that's rejecting and actually losing my boundaries because I would sink under in the name of helping somebody. Right. So now, yeah. And it is still a journey. I'll still slip into that every now and again. It's like, Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> How am I well, in I can my make your world easier? I'll just do it. And then I'm like, exactly. I'm actually, I'm pretty proud of myself. I've been catching myself more often lately. Yeah. It's like, Wait a minute. This is not my job. I know. <laughs> it's like, you once know, you start, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and people do that. They just drop it in. It's like, okay, it's your problem now. And I'm just like, no, no, it's, it's not actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and, but they're just conditioned because we condition them, you know, and then it's unconditioning that to say, yeah, no, it's not okay. Yeah, and it's okay totally. for me to say that it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're just at the end of our time. So do you have any last minute advice or any tips or any, anything else that you'd like to share? Um, I think for anybody is like, say, as we said, it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to go get help. And we don't have to do it alone. You know, we were never meant to do it alone. Our healing journey is a very personal and singular journey. Mm -hmm. But it's meant to be supported on the outside as we do this journey by the whole, you know, our, our tribe by those that we love and those that we trust. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones that hold the space for us as we figure out what our internal stuff is so mm -hmm. i think it's like get a coach if you if you can find your tribe that you need and trust that it's not an easy journey but it's so worth it at the end because when you can have the freedom and know that you're not damaged goods and you never were mm -hmm. that gives you a whole new sense of freedom that you've never even could have imagined you know and mm -hmm. i'm living proof of that like i don't have a doubt of what my worth is now and um you know and i just see it see the fear that i was living in all the time and i'm not living in that fear anymore i'm coming from that place of love so mm -hmm. it's a beautiful place and if anybody is ever questioning that then they're they're getting ready to to explore i love that oh that's mm -hmm. such a deep insight mm -hmm. and that is exactly i love where we're ending because it is about it's coming always coming from love it's choosing yeah. love it's aligning with love fierce love there's all different aspects of love but it still comes from that that place yeah. of love yeah. love drives yeah. and i think pe most people don't know what that love is because mm -hmm. they haven't experienced it they we, it's the conditioned love you know it's like if you do this then i'll love you or if you do that it's not that love that's still from fear it's yeah. that totally honestly that i can love you as a being mm -hmm. just to be just that you're here yeah you know there's no expectations on it Mm hmm. Yes, it's, it's a big learning and, and I've learned into that too. It's been a great, great unraveling mm -hmm. and designing, you know, understanding what the difference is with romantic love with there's yes. all different styles of love. Yeah. Right? And what what hat of love do you want to put on now? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So thank you so much, Corby. I so enjoy yeah, your you. conversations and our time. It's such a blessing to spend time with you. So thank you everyone for watching today. Thank you for um, your comments, your questions. Please share, share it out in your communities. Um, put your comments below and uh, I'll be posting. You can connect with Corby. Her link will be in the show notes. And until next time, you know, be the light, be the love and uh, be in abundance. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.